Hello, I'm Jason Phillips with the Simpson County Extension Service. I'm the Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources, and I'm here with my co-worker. I'm Catherine Webster, and I'm the Extension Agent for 4 g Development. So Catherine, we've been getting a lot of questions this year about container gardening, and uh, gardening in general. So today we're going to focus on container gardening, and uh, we've got here on the table some different things that you'll need in order to do your own container gardening. Uh, so if you want to mention a few of the things that we've got here. So we're using a five-gallon bucket for our container, and I think you're going to show everybody how to put holes in that, whatever the container has got to have drain holes. Yes, so a container, you know, a five-gallon bucket works great for uh, certain plants like tomatoes that we're going to be planting today, but we, we, it's got to have the ability to drain. So we're going to have to drill drain holes. And then we've got potting soil. Mm -hmm. And is there already some fertilizer in the potting soil? There are some nutrients in this particular potting soil. This is miracle Grow Moisture uh, Control. You can use other types, but look and see if there is uh, fertilizer mixed in with your potting soil. And in this case, there is. So if I've never done any gardening and I want to do a container gardening, I can't just go dig up dirt from the yard and do this. I've got to start with some potting soil. Well, it's probably a good idea to use potting soil. Okay. You could use dirt, but you'll probably have to add something like perlite or vermiculite to allow it to drain properly, uh, you know, because just straight soil probably wouldn't drain. So the worst in a investment container. Uh -huh. to get the potting soil. Okay, and so what are we going to be planting today? So today we're planting aroma tomato. Um, this is a determinant or bush type tomato, which I would definitely recommend for a container garden. A five gallon bucket works well for a lot of uh, tomatoes and peppers and uh, some various things that we grow in the summer garden. You know, we're here at the end of April right now, and typically for our area in South Central and Western Kentucky, or the earliest safe planting date uh, for a lot of our traditional summer crops such as this is April 20th. So we're just past that. So based on history, we should be okay in planting. And one good thing about a container garden is if they call for some cold weather, you can take it indoors. But anybody can utilize a container garden, whether you've got a patio um, or just any place that you can put this that it's gonna receive eight hours of sunlight per day. So we'll just go ahead and drill our drain holes about a half inch from the bottom. I've got a 3 8 inch drill bit here. Uh, anything from about a quarter to a 3 8 is gonna work well for you. going to drill about four holes. If you've got a smaller drill bit, you can probably go six. And so if somebody's watching and they don't have a drill at home, then they probably need to start with some kind of container that's got holes in the bottom or holes sure. on the side. And it's got to have some drain holes. You can easily purchase a container with a drain hole, but that's, yeah, that's critical in being successful with container gardening. You've got to have a drain hole. And, and if they're reusing a, a five gallon bucket that they've already got at home, they just need to make sure it's clean. Mm -hmm. Clean it out. Depending on what came in it, you know, you can watch it, wash it out with a bleach solution followed by water, and that'll work. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and pour our, our soil in here. Each of these are eight quarts. So let's take our. Uh, we're going to use this, so these will probably get about uh, three feet tall, so we're going to use this tobacco stick to stake. So as I pour the soil in around it, I'm going to go ahead and hold it in here, and we can actually plant the tomato pretty deep. Uh, I'm going to take, so this tomato plant, I'm going to, it's a good hardy transplant. Uh, we start with these transplants a lot. I'm going to prune off the lower leaves, and this is going to be below the soil level. It will put out roots off of the main stem. So I'm just going to break these roots up just a little bit. Indeterminates grow throughout the year, so they're going to get too tall and not be not be real, real good for a container. I would say first off, you need a bush-type tomato, which is also referred to as determinate, and uh, typically your cherry tomatoes work good. 
and your smaller varieties of tomatoes are the are the best for container gardens. So now that we've got it broken up, could you add just a little bit more soil here? Tell me when. We can go a little more. And actually, I think to get it good and stable, I'm going to prune off this, pinch off that last one there. We're going to plant it. It doesn't hurt a thing to plant these tomatoes good and deep. You want more soil in? Let's see. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and use all the soil. And you might see here, I mean, the, the soil comes up pretty high on this plant. I always like to plant my tomatoes pretty deep. It allows it to put off extra roots. So we've already got our stick in. Uh, we can tie this up to the stick. We don't need to start with that. But as it grows, we can tie it up to the stick as it gets higher. I like to use orange twine, grass twine, cloth can work but it does sag a little bit over time. The orange twine, polypropylene twine is what I recommend, but you can use anything. And Jason, can I only put one plant per container? We recommend in a five gallon bucket, only one tomato plant okay. per container, per bucket. So there we go. Uh, now what I would do is water this in uh, with the, to start it off with our miracle Grow fertilizer that we have here. Uh, we mix one and a half tablespoons per one and a half gallons of water. And you can mix that in, in anything. And so this is something really anybody can do. Um, all ages, it sure. doesn't matter. I know for 4-H for members, one of the entries that they can have in the county fair is to have a vegetable mm -hmm. container garden. So now's a great time um, for any kids that are out there watching that if you want to, um, to enter in the county fair or if you want to do a little bit of gardening, then you can do that. Um, of course, you can contact the Extension Office at any time. We have lots of recipes on how to use tomatoes. Um, I think we talked about earlier, Roman tomatoes would be great for a tomato paste, and sure. tomato sauce, salsa, um, put them on a fresh salad this summer. Um, and then we also- They're great to eat too by themselves. They're a good eating tomato. And you know, if somebody's growing a lot of tomatoes, um, so we're at the end of April, probably going to see our first tomatoes off this plant July, mid-July. 75 to 80 days for romas right. to mature. And the one thing about determinants to remember is that they're, uh, they have one big fruit set that comes in all at the same time. So if you want to continue throughout the year, you need to have uh, a staggered planting. So maybe in a couple weeks, you'd plant a few more, plant three or four, then plant three or four more a couple weeks later. Unlike a, an indeterminate would continue to grow throughout the year, but that's just not well suited right. for a container. If you end up with a lot of tomatoes or you know, anything you're growing in your gardens this summer, you can contact the Extension Office. We've got recipes we can provide you. We've also got a lot of information that we'll put out um, as summer approaches on how to can. Well, I think that pretty well covers it. If people have more questions, you know, we've got a great publication, Gardening in Small Spaces, ID 248, that's available online, or you can get it from the local extension office. Uh, but, you know, if, if you've got questions about maintaining the plant as it grows or any other questions about container gardening, feel free to contact us pretty simple. I think anybody can do it. Sure. Yeah, you can give us a call at 270-586-4484 um, or check us out on Facebook and we'll be glad to help you.